it was only a matter of when, not if, that I was going to make a video to congratulate Jerome Ginla, Iggy, on being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. And as expected, he got inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame on the first ballot. So congratulations, Jerome Ginla, on being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, headlining the 2020 Hall of Fame class here as he definitely did well, well enough to earn that honor. And the fact that I would dare say he's my man crush. I wish I could be. Definitely had a, you know, great life and even better as a person. And, you know, as a Flames fan, I definitely feel very humbled and fortunate that I got to cheer on Jerome Ginla for much of his Hall of Fame hockey career. To up until 2013, where sadly he did not win a Stanley Cup with the Calgary Flames, and we were hoping that you know, we would give him an opportunity to get one. And the fact that he did play around a few other teams in his NHL career towards the end of his career, but it, it just didn't look right. I mean, it was the same player, same personality, but it just didn't look right. And and also. He is also going to be always be known as a Calgary Flame. But he did not start his NHL career as a Calgary Flame as back in 1995. And I'm sure if you redid the 1995 draft today, given what we know in here, Jerome McGinley would be drafted first overall and not 11th overall, as it was the Dallas Stars that initially drafted Jerome McGinley. And then six months later, Joe Neuendijk was in a contract dispute with the Calgary Flames. So we traded Joe Neuendijk to the Dallas Stars for Corey Millen and Jerome McGinley. And let's just say the rest is history here. And the only two more things that I wish happened to Jerome McGinley was obviously win the Stanley Cup, preferably with these guys. And well, we got so close in 2004. And what if? And if he would have done it all with the Calgary Flames, as after when you got traded to the Calgary Flames from the Dallas Stars, as he was still playing with the Canucks Blazers in the Western Hockey League here, and when he was told just before the World Junior Tournament, where in that tournament he won the top forward there, that he was told he got traded to Calgary. At that time, he thought he was getting traded to the Calgary Hitmen, and he was wondering, why well, am I getting traded to the Hitmen? when I'm still the peak of the Blazers, when he realized he were going to the Calgary Flames. And, you know, he definitely played 16 seasons uh, with the Calgary Flames. And then he played four more seasons with a, you know, quick stint with the Pittsburgh Penguins as we traded him to the Pittsburgh Penguins at the 2013 week before the trade deadline there. And then he signed a one-year deal with the Boston Bruins. And he played there in 13-14. And then he signed a three-year deal with the Colorado Avalanche. And then towards the end of his contract with the Colorado Avalanche, he got traded at the trade deadline in 2017 to finish his career with the Los Angeles Kings and played under Daryl Sutter for one last time there. And Daryl Sutter said when he was the head coach of the Los Angeles Kings that, you know, he was still the same player that he had the pleasure of coaching with the Calgary Flames when he was a... Los Angeles King there, and, you know, he definitely did well enough to warrant this honor for being in the Hockey Hall of Fame here, and definitely if we can go over some numbers and all the awards that he won, and, you know, I definitely made a few videos talking about Jerome McGinley, where keep in mind that you're eligible to be in the Hall of Fame three years after you played the last game, because it wasn't until late July, just two years ago, that uh, he announced that he was retiring from the NHL, and Finley, he did it with the Calgary Flames, where he just announced it in Calgary, and then that off season in the 1819 season, where we knew it was a matter of when, not if, that the Calgary Flames were going to retire his number 12, and his number 12 is retired in the rafters, he joins Lane McDonald, Number nine and Mike Vernon, number 30. I still think uh, Al McInnes, number for number two, and Joe Nundike, the guy that we trade away to get Jerome McGinley, 
Eric Gabriel, they're both honored. Helma Kinnis and Joe Nunick are honored as Forever Flame, but uh, I think those numbers should also be retired and not just honored here. But uh, that's where Jerome McGinnell is. So, I mean, overall in his NHL career, he played over 1,500 games, 1,554. He scored 625 goals, 675 assists for exactly 1,300 points here. And he also had 10, 1,000. 40 penalty minutes here is Jerome McGinley. You definitely, I would consider him a very a light version of Gordy Howe, and that's still pretty good. If you're, if I'm compared, I, I didn't have a pleasure to see Gordy Howe play here, but Gordy Howe definitely was the complete player. Where you know, he was a power forward here, and I think Jerome McGinley definitely played that well there. He was a leader. He was a classy guy. He fought. He scored the big goal. Gives the team a boost here, and there was many times where you hear opposition players say, oh, you don't want to get him angry, because when he gets angry, it's, it's almost like the Hulk. He goes in beast mode, and man, I think definitely we were lucky to have him play most of his career with the Calgary Flames here. And then the playoffs here, he in 81 playoff games, he scored 37 goals, 31 assists for 68 points, and 98 penalty minutes here. And he definitely had three long playoff runs here. First with the Calgary Flames in 2004 when we win that brutal run to the Stanley Cup Final there in 26 games. He had 13 goals, 9 assists, or 22 points, and 45 penalty minutes here. And I think if uh, things would have played out differently there, I think he would have won the Consumite Trophy. Him or maybe Nick Kerbersop, but it was Jerome McGinley that definitely got the team on his back there, and then he had a couple long runs where he was with the Pittsburgh Penguins when they got to the conference championship, and I ironically lost to the Boston Bruins, the team that he signed for the next offseason there, because I made a couple of videos where I look back on a couple of trade retrospects where uh, he did get traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins, but there was a reported trade that he would have went to the Boston Bruins, and the Boston Bruins won that trade by not actually getting him, but getting him in the free agency there, so uh, that's definitely, you know, his career numbers in a nutshell here. I mean, Jerome McGinley definitely came in, started off well. He had a second so-so season there. And it wasn't until, let's say, just after 2000 where he uh, really started picking up his game there. And then the, I'd say the two best seasons that, that I say Jerome had with the Flames that were the best was the 0-2 season individually where he won the Art Ross Trophy and the first of two Rocket Richard Trophies there. And then the 0304 season where he shared the Rocket Richard Trophy with uh, Rick Nash and Ilya Kovachuk there. And then, you know, leading the Flames to this to close to winning the Stanley Cup or debatably should have won the Stanley Cup in 2004 there. And who knows how history would have played if Jerome McGinley would have got a Stanley Cup and would have played all of his playing career with the Calgary Flames here. So uh, that's just his quick statistics here. I mean, he won the World Junior Gold and... 1996, that was after when we made the trade for uh, Joe Noondike to send him to Dallas there. Then he won a gold at the World Championship for Team Canada in 1997 when the Flames didn't make the playoffs there. Then he won two gold medals with Team Canada at the Olympics in 2002 and 2010. 2002 in Salt Lake City. And in 2010, he set up the goal. He made things happen and set up for Sidney Crosby to score the goal and goal where Sidney Crosby yelled Iggy. Give me the puck, shoot it over on Miller Head, and we won the gold medal in Vancouver there. I mean, the only time he didn't win any hardware for Team Canada was in 06, where Canada finished 7th in Torino there. Then he won the World Cup of Hockey in 2004 there. So uh, definitely he represented Team Canada, and more often than not, he was a champion there too, and awards and honors while well, he was on the rookie team, the NHL rookie team in 1997, he was a first team All Star in 02, 08, 09. He won the Rocky Richard Trophy in 2002, 2004 for most goals in, in the NHL that season. And he definitely was no one's a goal scorer. Won the Art Ross Trophy for leading scorer in 2002 there. And let's just say he probably should have won the Hart Trophy if one hockey writer showed up there. But we also didn't make the playoffs that year. We won the Les B. Pearson Award, which is now the Ted Lindsay Award. The players vote on him as the best player in the league. and that was his final season, one of his final seasons in 2002. He was a second-team All-Star in 2004. 
He won the King Kansi Memorial Award in 2004 for leadership in humanitarian use. Jerome McGinnell definitely was well involved in the community and one big community who definitely were charity that he was a big part of was kids sport in Calgary. So kids can play. He definitely was very charitable with his money, his time. As I say, the world would be a better place if we can all be half of Jerome McGinnell. Because, yeah, I just got to wonder, how, how could he do it all? How could he be a complete player on the ice, a fear competitor, you know, leads the team, he fights, he scores, and be one heck of a guy at the same time? I, I like to know how the heck he can do that. <laughs> we all do. That's why I'd say he's my man crush. And I mean, Joe Otto was my favorite Calgary Flame, you know, in my childhood here, but... I'm going to say Jerome McGinnell is up there too, and I'll show some jerseys that I still have with his name on it. In 2004, he also won the NHL Foundation Player Award for Community Commitment, Perseverance, Teamwork, and Community. And then he won the Marc Messier Leadership Award in 2009, and then 2020. He headlines going into the Hockey Hall of Fame year, an international year, 1996 for World Juniors. He was a first team All Star and best junior forward there, and that was after when we made the trade from Joe Noondike. And then in junior hockey, he won two more Cups with the Canada's Blazers in 1994 and 1995 here. He won the George Parsons Trophy for the most sportsmanlike player of the Memorial Cup in 1995. He was the first team All-Star in the Western Hockey League in 1996. And actually after when the Canada's Blazers got knocked out of the playoffs there, Jerome Gannick was jettisoned to Calgary to play in Game 3 against the Chicago Blackhawks and he picked up an assist in this first playoff game. And then Game 4, where unfortunately we lost to the Chicago Blackhawks in triple overtime. When we got swept there, Jerome McGinnell actually scored the goal in uh, Game 4 there. Chicago tied up late and then scored in triple overtime. So he, he went from junior right into the NHL there, and he fit in very well. And Then he scored uh, his first goal against the Vancouver Canucks that following season in his rookie year. I'm going to say CHL first all-star in 1996, and then team boards. This is the Flames here, Molson Cup for most three-star selections, 01, 02, 03, 04, 08, and 2011. He was the Molson Cup winner, six-time. Ralph T. Skirfield Humanitarian Award, 102 for humanitarian contributions. And then he won the J.R. McCaig Award for respect, courtesy, and compassion in 2008 here. So uh, I'd say he's done it all in his position. Sadly, no Stanley Cup. I mean, it's a shame that he did not win a Stanley Cup. In his career, would have been great if he would have won it with the Calgary Flames, or would have been great if I would have saw, seen him win a Stanley Cup anywhere else in the NHL. There, and closest he got was with the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2013, but that didn't work out. And you know, I have to say, the two more things that I wish would have happened in Jerome McGinnell's Hall of Fame career that I would have said went 100% perfect was win the Stanley Cup and. Did it all, played it all with the Calgary Flames here, but uh, he's going to be most known for as a Calgary Flame. And I say he was the first Bell Hall of Famer, and congratulations. He uh, well deserved and won after an honor, and he was always humble and proud that he got it. He also goes in with Marion Hossa, another player that also got in on the first ballot there. You know, he was more known for his time with the Ottawa Senators and eventually. After being on the wrong end of the Stanley Cup twice with the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Detroit Red Wings, where that was when Detroit and Pittsburgh played each other back to back in the Stanley Cup, there he eventually won three cups with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks there. And actually, interestingly, Marion Hossa is still actually technically under contract with the Arizona Coyotes here, but uh, you know it's the three years after you left the ice here that you're eligible to go in the Hockey Hall of Fame, and Marion Hossa definitely deserves. To be in the Hockey Hall of Fame, he just wasn't sure if it was going to be on the first ballot. Jerome again was absolute slam dunk, and I would definitely be making a rant for you if he did not get inducted in the Hall of Fame on the first ballot, but, you know, definitely was all deserved. And then two more defensemen get inducted in the Hall of Fame. That one player is Doug Wilson, who also played with the Chicago Blackhawks for much of his career, and now currently the general manager of the San Jose Sharks. He actually finishes his career with the San Jose Sharks before being the general manager here and actually look at his number and how many times he won the Norris Trophy. I would see a case that, yeah, he did deserve to uh, get that honor. He had to wait 24 years to get that honor and he was in an era where he was overshadowed by Paul Coffey and Ray Bork here. And then the other defenseman was up the road that we saw a lot of. 
well, it's Kevin Bow here, and, you know, it's another solid defenseman, stay-at-home defenseman that he was one of the few defensive defensemen that played on the Edmonton Oilers during their dynasties. He was on all, all five Stanley Cup winners with the Edmonton Oilers, and he also won the Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers with Mark Messier when they led them to the Stanley Cup in 1994 there. So those are the four NHL players that have went on to the Hockey Hall of Fame. And then they always induct a women player, and it was Kim St. Pierre, the goalie that has played for Team Canada internationally on many occasions. And the one builder that got inducted was Ken Holland, who now is the general manager of the Edmonton Oilers. But his body of work that he did with the Detroit Red Wings, especially with their Cups in 1997, 1998, 2002, and 2009, where he was the toolage of building up, or 2008, I should say, because Detroit lost in 2009, but he did lead the Detroit Red Wings to four Stanley Cups under his tillage there and built up a dynasty there, or close to the dynasty you can get, especially in the Stanley Cup era there. And, of course, Edmonton's bacon on. He'll bring some of that to Edmonton now, or his big role is trying to keep Conor McDavid happy. But those are the six people that have been inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame for 2020. And Jerome McGinley definitely led the way, and congratulations to all the players and builder that got inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame. And, of course, there's always debate on who is still being snubbed, and I'll make a separate video on one player that I think is most known for playing for the Calgary Flames that I say is about time that he gets inducted to the Hall of Fame. I'll make a separate video here. But before I close out here, I'll show you some jerseys that I have. I drum again. I got the t-shirt on, as you see on the t-shirt here. Let's show some jerseys here. So, I mean, I've Occasionally I wear these jerseys or show them in uh, my videos here, but uh, I got a few jerseys with Jerome again on here. So here is the uh, Heritage Classic jersey that we wore in 2011. This uh, closely represents the uh, Calgary Tigers here. And I'll eventually talk about the Calgary Tigers more in depth in my Remember the Calgary series here, but uh, as you can see here, as the striping here is the logo for the Heritage Classic. You know, the felt, felt logo there, number 12 striping, and of course, the familiar number 12 here, which that was the number that he wore for much, much of his career. And actually, a trivia question here is, when Jerome McGinley played his first season in the NHL with the Calgary Flames, he actually wore number 24. And then when Paul Cruz, I believe, because Paul Cruz wore number 12 when he moved on, Jerome McGinley wore number 12 ever since, and like I say, you'll never see another Calgary Flame wear number 12, and he's definitely the greatest Flame of them all. I'm going to say now for sure that it's Jerome McGinley. So that's my Heritage Classic jersey here. And of course, I like this jersey. I know it's polarizing, but here is my Blasty jersey. The alternate logo that we had. I know when Jerome McGinley first came in to the NHL, Calgary was wearing those pedestal jerseys, and then we brought in Blasty here. I got the, you know, this captaincy, the 25th anniversary patch here. And on the back, of course, there's number 12, Jerome McGinley, which definitely you're going to say this is definitely acceptable fashion if you want to be accepted in Calgary, even today, if you want to fit in with the See of Red in Calgary, I want to be accepted. Play it safe and get a Jerome McGinley jersey. So this is my Blasty jersey. And actually, originally, I got this jersey blank, and then I wanted to get numbered with a Ginla on here. i say I definitely made a great choice. Even though the family joke was is that uh, I get a player, and then the player gets traded. And eventually, Ginla did get traded, but uh, he did say he had some say in his fate here, but... Uh, he got traded because it was time to rebuild and move on and hopefully do what we call Ray Bork and eventually get a Stanley Cup. It did work for Ray Bork, but fortunately it didn't work for Jerome McGinley. And of course, this is what uh, you can probably see the most famous Jerome McGinley jersey. When we wore this red. Flashback to 2004 with this red here. It's this striping here because the other current red I have uh, is uh, 
Now, I don't have any numbers on there, and eventually I'm going to have to buy myself a, a retro one. But uh, as you can see here is the captain here, and on the back with the horse head blasty logo. There's Jerome McGillan, but uh, this is what we were in 2004 here, and you know, we were so close. Uh, at least we got this hat here, but uh, yeah, these are my Jerome McGinla numbered jerseys, and then of course the t-shirt here. So uh, I definitely always going to have a piece of Jerome McGinla and all the memories of him, and now he's a Hockey Hall of Famer. And definitely sounds great. It was just a matter of when, not if, that he was going to get inducted to Hall of Fame, and uh, you know, this number is always going to be retired. Forever in the Calgary Flames history year, and uh, you know, I I gotta say up to now, he is now the greatest Calgary Flame, and we can also maybe you could say Lane McDonald or Theron Fleury or Mika Kerpasov or Mike Vernon, Joe Nudyk, Al McInnes. You know, the list goes on here, but uh, no one can beat Jerome McGinley, and uh, you know he was definitely the complete player. Complete person, and I just, he was my man, he, I guess you could still say he's my man crush, I mean, uh, I, I admit that, I, I would definitely, would have loved to have the life that he had, and be the person that he has, I mean, that's definitely one great thing that he has, he was definitely a great personality, and you know, he's an Albertan, he was born in St. Albert, and grew up an Oilers fan, but when Jerome McGinn, uh, apparently the story was that when he was trying out for the hockey team, and he needed a jersey to wear just to try out, and his grandfather bought him a jersey. And it actually was a blank red Calgary Flames retro jersey. So I'm going to say his grandfather, his great grandfather, knew something then that Jerome McGinley looked best wearing red, regardless if it's the Calgary Flames or Team Canada. And he definitely he looked his best wearing red, and it just didn't look right when he was not wearing. Calgary Flames colors or Team Canada colors when he was wearing the Pittsburgh Penguin colors or the Boston Bruins. The kind of player that uh, Jerome McGinley was, he definitely fit in the perfect mold with the uh, Boston Bruins being brash and tough and the complete player. And, and I know he went to the Colorado Avalanche and you know because he's friends with Joe Sackick there. And then, you know, he had one last play with uh, Daryl Sutter in Los Angeles and then he, well, then he retired where he had to get his hip replaced and couldn't uh, play one more season. And eventually he retired with the Calgary Flames. But uh, this is my Jerome McGinley. Congratulations to touching on his Hockey Hall of Fame career and showing you some Jerome McGinley jerseys that I have in my collection that I still proudly wear. And, uh, you know, he's definitely the greatest Calgary Flame of all here. But uh, what do you think of Jerome McGinley's accomplishments is highly what memories do you have the most here I mean I mean I can't think of just one greatest memory I mean I'm gonna say you know I just remember uh, when he first came into the NHL uh, I mean a few times I saw him play I mean he was always joining the game he was signing autographs for everybody I remember seeing a young Jerome McGillan's rookie year I, I just I hope he went to Calder and he's he, he smiled even bigger and uh you know, how he played the complete game, and then how he just elevated his game. Starting in 2001, too, there with the Art Ross, the run to the Stanley Cup Final, all the times that he played for Team Canada. And then his personality. I mean, definitely how he did it all and be a great player. And then, you know, one sign that, uh, you know, Calgary has always hated a rival with Edmonton and Vancouver here. Well, I remember that uh, one classy thing that Troll McGinley did was at the end of, I believe it was the 07-8 uh, season, where Trevor Linden, it was known that he was going to retire from the NHL, and the Calgary Flames were playing the Vancouver Canucks in the last game of the regular season that year, and Calgary was in Vancouver. I remember we destroyed him. Actually, I think that's when Jerome McGinn uh, scored his second 50-goal season in that game there. But what happened was at the end of the game, you know, the players... Uh, Crowd around the goalie there, and then the Vancouver Canucks were you know, saluting the fans because they weren't going to go in the playoffs that year, but they wanted to salute the fans. But Jerome McGinley and leadership players, they waited until Vancouver was done, and then Jerome McGinley led the Calgary Flames players, you know, to go 
wait in line and congratulate Trevor Linden on his great career. That was definitely one solidarity that he showed of the Cold War between Calgary and Vancouver. That's always on the ice. But respect off the ice for the players there. And it kind of got replicated where the Vancouver Canucks did that to the Edmonton Oilers player when Ryan Smith decided to. It's time to retire. So, uh, you know, Ginlo started that too. So uh, there's definitely many, many things you can highlight Jerome Ginlo on his on-ice accomplishments when he was like off the ice and uh, I'm just glad that, you know, he got to uh, do much of it with the Calgary Flames. I'm glad I got to cheer for him, watch him and, uh, you know, it's just too bad he didn't get that Stanley Cup and uh, didn't get to play at all with the Calgary Flames. It would have been fitting if he did, but, uh, you know, it's harder to do that in, you know, hockey today, but uh, it is what it is, but he's in the Hall of Fame and forever enshrined and rightfully so. So if I say here, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, Home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders. So you, I mostly talk Calgary sports on my channel, so, uh, but I also do personal vlogs, attempt to comedy. I also share my experience, let's say I'm on the road or at a sporting event there. So if it all sounds like you'd be interested to watch to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, you know what you need to do. I also have my other social media links down in the description below there. So I say congratulations to Jerome McGinley on obviously one act of a career, but ultimately he got the call to get into the Hockey Hall of Fame. And, you know, also congratulations, Marinosa, Kevin Lowe, Doug Wilson, St. Kim St. Pierre, and Ken Holland here to all be a part of the 2020 Hockey Hall of Fame class here. But uh, I say Jerome McGinley headlines it the whole way. So, as I say, go Flames go. Congratulations, Iggy. Thanks for everything you've done. For the Calgary Flames, and you know, maybe you know, he'll get involved with the Flames somehow. Maybe he'll get a ring, Stanley Cup ring that way, you know, somehow get to be with management or coach. We still got Craig Conroy, we still got Martin Jonas. Maybe you know, Ginlow can join them, we'll win the Stanley Cup, and you'll still get a ring that way, kind of the same way how Cam Neely eventually got a Stanley Cup ring with the uh, Boston Bruins when they won the Stanley Cup in 2011 in that way, but uh, it still doesn't take away the career that Jerome McGinley had. So as I say, I'll see you in the next video here.